road and there we go Poppy passing in the in the truck and all of us Poppy Poppy and he looking straight ahead so we used to walk from Wolf Road straight to it was Montfort Street first by Home Fabrics and then it was Arundel Street and then I guess he eventually caught on and Grammy started to have the car more often but he was a loving father and so far he had gotten to see all his great grandchildren but he will be very very missed by us all and one day if we live right we will be able to see him when jesus comes and we look forward to that day so pappy until then like you sang the song until god calls all of us home one day we'll meet in heaven Kind, brave, clever, generous, hardworking, honest, compassionate, diligent, gregarious, impartial, empathetic, leader. These are just a few words out of a list of many used to describe Alfred Brennan or Pappy Brennan as he was known to family and close friends. The plan was, of course, after we were married, that she would go to church with me. Now, I wasn't baptized, but I decided I'd go to church. And we went to church and then for two Sabbaths, and then one Sabbath we went to her church. But that was the last time she went to her church. She continued going with me down to Grandstown on Brother Macmillan, D.A. Macmillan, that is all the Macmillan brothers, their father, the old Jamaican. He was the senior elder of Grandstown Church for a long time. And Brother Major, who got, who got married a day after we were married on, no, the day before. They were married on the 17th at Grandstown. We were married on the 18th at uh, Shady Street Methodist Church. And we became friends. And the two of them would come to our house every Sabbath to say to go over the studies with us which we might have missed and the rest of it. And then I decided we would be baptized together. Now we had no pastors in the conference. Pastor McKinney and Pastor Scavala was in school. So the president baptized Pastor Roach he was about 16, young fella. I don't know if you know, what the Deputy Commissioner of Police? Mason. Mr. Mason's daughter, wife. Uh, Ernest King and my wife and I, five of us. On Sunday morning, the 23rd of December, 1951, and it was cold. The wave was hitting you like I don't know what. And we went to the eastern uh, beach. I'm Barrington Brennan, the only son of Alfred Brennan. And I often say I'm the hibiscus among the roses because I'm not a pain in the butt, I'm not a thorn. So I think. And, <laughs> and uh, I remember my dad a number of wonderful things. One was building the community services huts at the community services and Pathfinder exhibition long before they had tents. So they had to build, cut down pine trees and palm thatch on um, top and build these huts for them or these tents or these boots rather. And my father one year built one with no no support pole for uh, um, uh, um, what do you call it? apex roof 
you know, an angle roof and with the support beam in the middle and no pole was holding up the roof. Everyone marveled how my daddy could do that. It was a wonderful time in our church when we competed how to make these huts for community services and pathfinder exhibition out of palm branches and, and uh, pine trees. I remember going with him in the back of the truck to cut them. And I also remember my last time building, building the home for Alexander Malus out Carmichael Road. But what I remember my dad would do, when the men got hot and thirsty, he would go to the store and bring cases of Vitamalt with buckets or tubs of ice, and he would keep our or or Ribena, and mix the cool, mix the drink, and he kept them going in the hot sun by by serving them these cold drinks. That was my father. He was a man with great knowledge, strong morals, and unwavering faith, never broken by trials and tribulations. He taught us all so much, how to be grateful for what we have, how to love unequivocally and unconditionally, how to improvise, like substituting fruits for sugar in our cereal. The last one hardly stuck as kids because we loved our sugar. But now as an adult, I'm thankful for the tip. And um, all this is free labor now. We're talking, we, we wake every Sunday and in the nights. My wife used to tell me, when you're going, you might as well carry your clothes, because I know I ain't gonna see you till about 12 o'clock. <laughs> I don't know where we had the energy. And um, I did the plans, I laid out the Angleston Church, and that was our third church in New Providence. While building, while doing the plans, <clears throat> I fell off a roof right down the road here. And trying not to break my back, I used this hand and spun my spun around a little bit and this hand went under the ladder so I break this wrist into a fork shape I jumped up the fellas was about to call the ambulance I said no don't call no ambulance I'm going to school for my wife hi I'm Vanessa Seymour Rami I am the oldest grand of Pappy, uh, which is, requires a lot of responsibilities, but I accept them all with open arms because of my granddaughters. Uh, my fondest memory of Pappy will be because I was by myself for say three years, being the only grand. So every time Pappy would go somewhere, he would take me with him. He had like three different vehicles all the years we've been with him through Ministry of Housing. I love to go with him in the Jeep. We used to bunks up and down in the Jeep, up and down over through the place because he was in charge of building Elizabeth States. So I used to be in the office all the time, using the walkie-talkie, talking to Miss Sweeting all the time. Papi out, papi out. I in the office now. And after every day, we go up to Mortimer's candy store and I would get a bag of roasted peanuts and to this day I don't eat peanuts out of a jar. You gotta be out that bag and that's from Pappy. He will be missed but what keeps people going is the memories that we have of them so he'll always be here in my heart. My brother B. I can hardly think of life in the Bahamas without brother B. When we just got here shy of nine years ago he was the elder for the church, which became my home. Brother B knew that it was his responsibility to initiate us as members of the church, but more so into the Bahamian culture. He brought us home. And with his wife, Sister Brennan, he took care of us like parents, native parents would. Pargate was not Pargate without Brother B's pound cake. It was not Sabbath celebration without his drink, his special drink, and not to mention his bush tea concoctions. He always gave you something to smile about. His singing 
his love, his endearment, his genuine spirit, his giving, his Benny Cakes. He just made life so much more exciting. He may not have been a wealthy man, but to have walked this earth for 86 years and witnessed three generations of his bloodline persevere, one could say he was one of the richest men in the world. Pappy will be sorely missed, forever engraved in our hearts, and I long for the day when the heavens break open, the trumpets sound, and we see him again, hand in hand with his beloved wife. But until then, Pappy, until then, we will go on singing. I love you. Well, I'm happy that I was able to do what I did, but I still feel that there's much more I can do. But it, it takes a lot to do it, but I did it because Christ did more than that for me. But until then, my heart will go on sea. Until then, with joy I'll carry on Until the day my eyes behold that sea Until the day 